Hey, welcome back guys. So today it's time to continue on with this project. Uh, if you haven't seen the videos leading up to this, there have been quite a few of them. But last time what we did is we added some transparent green lacquer to this flame maple top. So now as we've covered before, or as I've mentioned before, there are some issues around the edges of this because the veneer is so thin and when I got this kit, it was sanded right through in a couple spots. It's a really cheap kit. I don't know that I'd buy one again. In fact, I wouldn't, but hey, it is what it is. So what I'm gonna do in order to kind of, you know, alleviate the problem that that causes with the aesthetics of it, is I'm gonna put a thin veneer, or not a veneer, sorry, vignette, a thin vignette or burst effect on here using black nitrocellulose lacquer. I'm gonna use a fairly large paint gun to do that because that's my lacquer gun. So uh, like a 1.5 millimeter nozzle, um, with the fan pattern turned all the way down. Should be interesting. And then I'm also going to coat the back edges, neck and headstock all with that black. Uh, in a later video, we'll go over taking that black off of the binding afterwards so that we get the binding effect back. And we'll also cover how to get rid of the gloss on the back of the neck so that your hand can move more easily. So, I don't think I need to explain anything more than that right now because I'll be able to kind of explain it as I go. Uh, so let's get started, shall we? All right, guys. So like I said, I'm using a 1.5 millimeter nozzle here on a fairly large gun with the fan pattern turned all the way down. Um, this video is sped up, uh, this part of it, to 200%. So it's going twice as fast as I actually did this. So if you can't do it this quickly, don't think that that's an issue because it's not. Anyway, I feel that this probably would have been easier if I had gone ahead and used a touch-up gun instead, something like a one millimeter nozzle. Obviously that kind of thing is easier for this smaller detail work. But like I said before, this is my lacquer gun, so I decided to just go ahead and use this. And if you're careful, this kind of thing should work just fine as you can see here. Uh, you just have to be a little careful about uh, what angle you're spraying it at and how far away you are and have decent trigger control. So now I'm continuing on to the sides here. Now the, the edges are probably easier to do with the fan pattern wider. But just to make sure that I'm getting everything for now, I'm just doing them very carefully with the fan pattern still turned all the way down so that I'm spraying a circle like you would get with a paint can, except maybe even a little bit tighter than that. Uh, when I go to recoat this, I'm going to turn the fan pattern all the way back up, even to do the edges. When you're doing this, be very careful of the angle. You can see I'm spraying from the back of the guitar toward the front while I do the edges here, and that is to avoid getting paint on the front. So any overspray should just shoot right past the guitar because I haven't masked up the front for this, and I don't want to because it's a lot of work. So I'm able to avoid getting any paint on the front of the guitar using this technique. Now as I move on here to the back and the sides, I adjust my fan pattern a little bit wider and I adjust my air pressure my PSI accordingly because as you widen out the fan pattern your PSI drops. So there you can see I'm getting a nice wide fan as I spray the back. Just quickly doing the headstock here. Unfortunately I didn't plan this shot as well as I maybe should have. So you're not seeing me coat the first the front and then the sides of the headstock. Uh, and then I'm quickly going to do the top and back of it and work my way down the neck. Now I tend to do the neck in about three passes, one kind of to each side, and then one straight down the middle to finish it off. It's a little bit odd. You can change your fan pattern when you go to do the neck um, so that it sprays horizontally, and that's a good idea, but I was being a little bit lazy about it, to be honest with you. So now, I'm, as you can see, I'm on my second coat. I'm not going to redo the vignette. I wanted it to stay nice and thin. Uh, and I didn't want to risk widening it out, and it doesn't need to be any more opaque. I also didn't want to get a whole bunch more paint on the front of that binding. I want to be able to scrape that off, ideally, relatively easily after this. So I'll still have some on the side, but hey, what can you do? I'll have a little bit extra there to scrape off. Not the end of the world. Quick few passes on the back, just like last time. You'll have noticed last time that it went fairly quickly. It, uh, it goes fairly quickly again here. I just make sure that I've got the top and then I do my usual 50% overlap as I work my way down. And I'm only gonna do two coats of this black. I don't see the need to go any further than that. 
Uh, I've got full coverage at this point, and I'm going to be going over it with clear coat afterward to build up the finish just a little bit. So that should be just fine. Uh, I do suggest when you're spraying this, obviously wear a mask like I am here, but gloves are also a good idea. Nitrocellulose is uh, not great for your hands, so try to avoid getting it on there if possible. Alright guys, so there we have our black on there. So the uh, light vignette is done there. It's pretty thin, which is what I was going for. So it still reveals as much of that flame maple as possible, essentially. But it covers up all those imperfections that we were dealing with. So I'm happy with that. Sorry, I'm just kind of walking around with the camera here, so it's probably not particularly stable. But there's our black. I put it on nice and thin, but I do have full coverage, so I'm happy with it so far. Pretty much all that's left as far as uh, color and stuff before we move on to our clear coat is for me to do something a little more interesting on the headstock. Now the headstock, you may recall, I never really grain filled the front, so you can kind of see a bit of a grain pattern through there. I'm still deciding whether I'm going to leave that straight mahogany green or get rid of it. I did put a very thin coat of the sealer on there as well as a very thin coat of black. So it's, it's, not, uh, it's not hard to figure out why that grain pattern is still there. There's none of that on the rest of the guitar though. Anyway, that's about it for today. In the next video we'll probably do some work on the headstock, some airbrushing work and then we'll be ready to move on to the clear. So thanks for watching. Hope you guys enjoyed the video and we will see you next time. Bye. Hey guys, if you enjoyed the video, please give it a thumbs up so it'll be easier for other people to find and subscribe to stay up to date with all the cool projects I got coming out. Also a big shout out to Sovereign King who does the vast majority of the music for my channel, way better on guitar than I am. And to Troy from Noise Guitar Mods, I'll put the link in the description. The man is a great guitar tech and he's taught me most of what I know about how the internals of these things work. Thanks for watching guys, hope you enjoyed yourselves. See you next time.